Hello, this is Jamie Romero with Matt Key Howell, and today we're going to be talking about for loops in the Java programming language. I have a, a little program that we introduce as the first thing in Chapter 3 of our Introduction to Java class. It's a uh, simple little program that echoes command line arguments. I'll use this as a starting point for talking about for loops. Uh, first of all, though, let's look over the code. We have a class called echo. And this echo class has a main method with a single line of code inside the main method. It simply prints out the value of args 0. As you re may remember, in Java, all arrays are indexed starting from 0. So this would print out the first command line argument. Let's try it out to make sure it works properly. Recall that we use the Java C command to compile a Java program. So I'll run java c echo.java, and then the java command to run a Java program. So I'll go ahead and pass in a command line argument. I'll just pass in the number 1, run it, and sure enough, it echoes out the number 1. But if I were to try to echo out maybe several arguments, here we'll have three different arguments, because of the way the code's written right now, it just prints out the first one. Well, I could, I suppose, do a little bit of duplication here, and... Uh, now I'd be able to print out three arguments, arg0, arg1, and arg2. It would work if I go back and recompile and rerun the code. Well, now 1, 2, and 3 do print out. Problem is, it won't work if I have a fourth argument, because I've hard-coded in the number of printouts. So really, it's not a good idea for me to be printing these out you know, one line at a time, but rather, this is probably a good opportunity to add in a loop. And so I'm going to go ahead and add in a for loop. And uh, just getting a little bit of the structure together here, I'll get um, my curly braces in place. And inside the parentheses of a for loop, we actually have three, three parts that make it up. We have a section that we would like to call the initial or initialization part. We have a part that we call the test expression. And then we also have a part that we call the increment. Notice that after the initial and after the test expression, we have semicolons, but we do not add a semicolon after the increment. Well, let's get this going with real code now instead of just these, these terms here. So in the initialization section, this is normally where you declare a counter variable and initialize it to a starting point. Since we're working with arrays here, it seems like starting with zero would probably be a, a logical choice. So we have a variable i of type integer. We'll initialize it to 0. The test expression is run to, to test to see whether the loop should be invoked. And so normally what we have here is some sort of a Boolean expression that is checking the loop counter variable against some number. And so let's say we'll make sure that this loops uh, as long as the variable i is less than the value 3. Finally, the increment section is used to, well, to increment the counter variable, to add one, typically, to the loop counter. So we could say something like i equals i plus one here, and that would definitely work. Or we could use Java's uh, shortcut, shortcut notation and simply say i plus plus. That is the equivalent of, of typing in i equals i plus one. The only other thing I should modify is that I should be printing out args sub i so that each time through the loop, it'll have a different value, 0, 1, 2, etc. So um, let's walk through this. The very first time you run this program, or the first time through the loop, it's going to take and run the initialization statement, set i equal to 0. That initialization statement is only run once at the very beginning. Now, uh, once that's run, it then runs the test expression. Is 0 less than 3? Yes, it is. Since that test expression yields true, then the body of the loop would be invoked. And so it prints out arg sub 0 the first time through. After the loop completes, it runs the increment expression. And so i has 1 added to it. And so instead of having a value of 0, it has a value of 1. It then goes and runs a test expression again. Is 1 less than 3? Yes. And so it prints out args 1. The loop ends, and it adds one more to i. So i is now 2. Is 2 less than 3? Yes. It prints out args 2. The loop ends, and then it adds another one to i. So now i is now 3. Since i is now 3, well, 3 is no longer less than 3, so that's going to now yield false, and so the loop body would not be invoked. 
Instead, the loop ends. And any lines of code that would be typed in after the loop would now be invoked. So maybe I'll go ahead and just print out the word done at the end of the loop. So let's see if this works. I save that away. I'll bring up my DOS window, clear the screen off so we can move to the top here, compile echo.java, and let's run it with three arguments. So it prints out one, two, three, and done. This works great until I try to print out like four or five arguments, and it still prints out one, two, three, and then done. Well, as you probably suspect, the problem here is in our test expression. We were testing to make sure that i is less than 3. Well, that literal value 3 isn't going to be dynamic enough for what we want this program to do. What we need to do is we need to ask the array for how big it is. And it turns out that Java arrays always have a, uh, a field, an attribute associated with them called length that you can access to determine the size of the array, the number of elements in it. And so now we're checking to see is i less than args.length, less than the, the size of the array. With that little change to the code, we should now have a much more dynamic program. So I'll recompile. Now when I run this with four arguments, works great. If I run this with five arguments, it should work just fine as well. Actually, it should work with any number of arguments now because we have the, uh, the array size, the array length that we're checking for in the loop. Well, that concludes our video on how to work with Java for loops. Thank you very much for watching.